Okay, we're back. I'm Tina Trenner. This is Tina and Friends, Tony Barney and Larry Harrison, and we're talking about property rights in the United Nations, and I want to read a little bit to you about this because I want you to understand just how much jeopardy our property is in. As you, I, I promise you, you know someone who is losing their home, has lost their home, all of a sudden we have this big financial crisis and land and, and homes are starting to just be sucked up. Okay, and I want you to understand this. This says, uh, the land policy of the United... No, private ownership of land is not compatible with socialism, communism, or with global governance. As described by the United Nations, Stalin, Hitler, Castro, and Mao all took steps to forcefully nationalize the land as an essential first step toward controlling their citizens. The UN, without the use of military force, is attempting to achieve the same results. And this is what the uh, UN says. Land can not be treated as an ordinary asset controlled by individuals and subject to the pressures and inefficiencies of the market. Private land ownership is also a principal instrument of accumulation and concentration of wealth and therefore contributes to social injustice. Yep, if you're a communist, that's what you think. If unchecked, it may become a major obstacle in the planning and implementation of the developing development schemes. Schemes? What a cute word. The provision of the decent dwellings and healthy conditions for people can only be achieved if land is used in the interest of society as a whole. Principal control of land use is therefore indispensable. All right, within your community, they are they have been over a, a long period of time, they have been putting in place little um, glitches of people in your planning department called the smart growth people. That's right. What a cute name. They're the smart growth people. And they're the folks that are behind this scheme. So somewhere in the planning department in your town, you probably have smart growth. Yes, and they're thinking how they can piecemeal take away our property. I, is so socialism, communism, this is what, what has been done in history. What my question is, when you look at history and you see what a fiasco, people like Hitler and Mao, and you see how terrible it all was, why would you want to repeat that? What kind of an idiot wants to do that again? You know, really what we're talking about here is big government versus yes. small government. And world government. And, you know, traditionally, we have been all about small government. Yes. And right now, it, it, the employment ratio is in the high 40s that people are working for the U.S. government. Yes. Once that flips over to 51%, then it's pretty much game over. Then we have more people working for the federal government and we've got big government, okay? And as long as we can continue to have small government and allow the freedoms to be able to run, uh, then we're gonna be okay. But we have to pay attention. And if you're, if you're not scared, you're not paying attention. Oh, if you're not just scared to death, you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. This is a move. This is an international move to take down the number one country the world has ever known. And they're doing it all back here where you can't see it. This hand's doing this, but this hand's back here, and it's dismantling us. Did you know the smart growth folks? We're in your planning department because that's what the UN wants. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Did you know it? No, and I didn't know about Agenda 21 either, but I'm going to look it up, curious. huh? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Agenda 21. So go ahead and tell me about socialism and land ownership. Well, you bring up something that's very troubling to me is that um, when you look at what is going on right now in our economy with people losing their homes, uh, I can't help but think about the one asset that you as an individual would want to protect, and that is your home. For Americans, they consider their home almost like their sanctuary. That's where they come home to. That's something that they can call their own. And in reality, that uh, is freedom 
for most Americans, knowing that they can go to a place um, of seclusion at least once a day and have freedom uh, to do what they want. And yet, when we take away someone's home, their ownership, they essentially lose that freedom. And that's the concern I see and uh, is something that really, in a way, is destroying the middle class rather than creating the middle class that uh, was the, uh, the impetus and the driving force of capitalism throughout uh, the ages that, that we are aware of. Well, living the American dream. Exactly. That's you know, exactly that's right. And, and look at the generations before us that had homes they could pay for. Uh, they didn't have the interference from the globalists. Uh, we have a huge fight, folks, and we're going to have to fight back. And, you know, one of the questions I'm going to ask when we come back, because every day on television, you're seeing commercials about reverse mortgages. I keep saying, what's a reverse mortgage? So guess what? The reporter in me got on the phone, and I started calling around to find out what a reverse mortgage is. I can't get the whole answer, but I got part of it for you. So if you don't know the whole answer, uh, or... Believe me, I can't find the whole answer, but I will. I never give up. They say I'm a pit bull. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yes, I just put my little teeth right in there and I don't let go. Because I want to know. You cannot save yourself if you don't have the truth. And you know the, the old thing about if you're in an airplane and they tell you when the oxygen falls down, put the oxygen over your face first because you can't help the guy next to you. If you don't help yourself first, we better help ourselves. We have a short window of time, said it many times on this show. We have a short window of time to save ourselves. I don't even know what that means. I know that we have to get together. The tea parties are great. Don't believe all that racial crap they tell you. There's nothing to do with that. I mean, you know, you get 20,000 people together, it's bound to be an idiot. But mostly they're there about taxes. They're there about taking this country back. They're there because they care and they know in their heart that we're losing this country. They know it. You can feel it. You can take the pulse of what's going on in this country and feel just how bad things are getting. And then you start reading stuff like Agenda 21. We're going to take a break and we'll be back because we have a lot more to say. Go vote. <laughs>